the majority of current meters are based on the principle of the moving coil. The coil, mounted on a spindle, is positioned between the poles of a permanent magnet and is restrained by a spring. If the current to be measured is passed through the coil, the magnetic field will exert a torque on it. The coil will tend to take up a position perpendicular to the lines of magnetic induction. But the tension developed in the spring limits its movement. If the current through the coil is increased, the torque, due to the magnetic field, will also be increased. And the coil will rotate further. The effect of a magnetic field on a current can be more easily seen if a simplified arrangement is used. For example, a single current loop in a magnetic field. The magnetic field will exert a torque on the current loop and if the restraining force is very small, the coil will take up this position, that is, perpendicular to the lines of induction. The torque has its maximum value when the loop is in this position, parallel to the lines of induction. This maximum value, Tm, is the product of the current I, the magnetic induction B, and the area of the loop A. A magnetic field may be produced by a permanent magnet, but it can also be produced by a coil through which a current is passed. Let us consider a coil of this shape, known as a toroid, and place a current loop in it. If the toroid is connected to a current source, the loop will be subjected to a torque in the same way as if it had been placed between the poles of a permanent magnet. This shows that a current flowing through a toroid produces a magnetic field. The lines of induction are found to be circles confined to the interior of the toroid. The value of the induction is proportional to the current flowing through the toroid. When the current is switched off, the magnetic field collapses. Conversely, it builds up again when the current is reapplied. There are then two ways of obtaining magnetic fields. First, from permanent magnets, and secondly, from coils through which a current flows. In the latter case, the magnetic induction is proportional to the current applied. We will now study the relation between currents and magnetic fields more closely. For this purpose, we will take a simple example, a straight length of wire through which a current I flows. We will assume that the wire is in a vacuum. Here, the lines of induction are circles around the wire. If a right-hand screw is rotated in the direction of the lines of induction, it will move in the direction of the current. Let us consider one of these lines of induction in detail. At any point, the direction of the magnetic field is given by the tangent. Furthermore, the magnetic induction has the same value at any point on the circle. If the current is increased, the induction will increase in direct proportion. This can be expressed as a formula. B, the value of magnetic induction, is proportional to I, the value of current. The value of magnetic induction also depends on the size of the circle. If a larger circle is considered, it will be found that the magnetic induction is proportionally weaker. We will denote the circumference of the circle by L. The formula for magnetic induction can now be extended. B is proportional to I over L.
This relationship can be rewritten by adding a proportionality constant, denoted by the symbol mu zero. In this formula, B, the magnetic induction, is expressed in Teslas, and I over L in amperes per meter. Therefore, the dimension of mu zero must be Tesla meters per ampere. Its numerical value is found to be 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. The intensity of the magnetic field can also be expressed in amperes per meter. Then the proportionality constant becomes superfluous. If this is done, the symbol for the magnetic field becomes H and the value of H is called the magnetic field strength. Therefore, there are two ways of describing the magnetic field. First, by its induction B and secondly, by its field strength H. There is a simple relationship between B and H, but at a later stage we will see that this relationship is only true in a vacuum. The constant mu zero is called the permeability of the vacuum, or the absolute permeability. Let us now concentrate on the magnetic field strength H. For any circle around the wire, H equals I over L or HL equals I. The product HL is called the magnetomotive force around the circle and is denoted by FM. The formula can now be restated in a more general form. The magnetomotive force along a closed path is equal to the current I enclosed by it. If the conductor is bent to form a current loop, the lines of induction will bend with it, and this pattern will be obtained. The complete pattern is often symbolized by a single vector called the magnetic moment of the current loop. The value of this vector m is the product of the current I flowing through the loop and the area A enclosed by the loop. We have seen that a current loop placed in an external magnetic field is subjected to a torque and that the maximum value of this torque is given by this formula. It can be simplified by substituting M for IA. The current loop rotates due to this torque. and it is seen that the magnetic moment of the loop reinforces the external magnetic field. It is interesting to compare the behavior of a loop with that of a magnetic compass needle. The compass needle will also be subjected to a torque when a magnetic field is present, but it will take up a position parallel to the lines of induction. A compass needle can be considered to have two magnetic charges or poles of equal magnitude, but of opposite sign. Magnetic charges always occur in pairs, one charge being negative and the other positive. Such a combination is called a magnetic dipole. The field of a very small dipole is like this. It can be symbolized by a single vector, the magnetic moment of the dipole. Once again, we see that the external field is reinforced by this magnetic moment. A similar situation occurred with the current loop. In fact, the magnetic fields of a very small dipole and of a very small current loop are identical, except in the immediate proximity of their origins. If several current loops are placed side by side, their field patterns will merge to produce this pattern.
The same configuration is obtained with a solenoid through which a current flows. If the solenoid is bent, the magnetic field lines will also bend. If it is bent still further to form a toroid, the field will be completely confined to the interior of the coil. We will calculate the magnetic field strength along the center line of the toroid. The magnetomotive force along this line, Fm, is the product of the field strength H and the length of the path L. The magnetomotive force is also equal to the current enclosed by the path. If the coil has N turns and the current through the coil is I, the total current enclosed will be Ni. By dividing both sides by L, the magnetic field strength is obtained. If the toroid is in a vacuum, the magnetic induction B can be found by multiplying the field strength H by mu zero. At this stage, it becomes necessary to analyze the difference between B and H in greater detail. Let us now assume that a substance, for example a solid, is placed within the toroid. The atoms of this solid consist of nuclei surrounded by orbiting electrons. These electrons can be considered as small current loops, each having its own magnetic moment. The magnetic moments of the nuclei are so small that they can be neglected. In certain atoms, the magnetic moments of the electrons cancel out completely. But in other atoms, cancellation is not complete, and the magnetic moment remains. We will assume that the substance within the toroid is made up of such atoms. These atoms can be represented as single current loops. The magnetic field of the toroid will exert a torque on these current loops, with the result that their magnetic moments will reinforce the field. The magnetic field produced by the atomic currents is called the magnetization of the material and is denoted by the symbol M. The formula relating B and H must now be changed to include this magnetization. Usually the magnetization M is much smaller than the field strength H because due to thermal vibrations of the atoms, the alignment of the magnetic moments is far from complete. This is the case with paramagnetic materials. Only in some materials can M become very large. These are the ferromagnetic materials. When an atom has no resulting magnetic moment, we might expect that the external field would not be affected by it. In reality, however, such an atom will develop a small magnetic moment which will counteract the field. To understand this effect, let us consider a single electron in a magnetic field. If the electron moves, it will be subjected to a Lorentz force and its path will become curved. When the electron moves in the reverse direction, the Lorentz force will also be reversed. The free electrons in a moving conductor will be similarly affected. Consequently, a voltage will be developed which will disappear again when the conductor comes to rest. When the conductor is moved back towards its initial position, a reverse voltage will be set up. These voltages 
are induced voltages. If a stationary conductor is placed in the field so that it forms a loop with the moving conductor, the induced voltages will give rise to currents. An electron current is equivalent to a conventional current flowing in the opposite direction. The direction of the magnetic moments associated with these currents can be found by a right-hand screw rule. If this rule is applied, it will be seen that the magnetic moment vector will point either in the direction of the field or in the opposite direction. The direction of the induced magnetic moments can be related to the number of induction lines enclosed by the loop. This number is known as the magnetic flux through the loop. When the conductor moves, the magnetic flux through the loop decreases or increases. The induced magnetic moments will always oppose the change of flux. When the flux decreases, the magnetic moment will reinforce the field And when the flux increases, the magnetic moment will counteract the field. The essential thing in obtaining induced magnetic moments is the change of flux through the loop and not the movement of a conductor. Consider, for example, a toroid through which a current flows. The flux within the toroid can be increased by increasing the current. And therefore, when a loop is placed within the toroid, the flux through the loop will also be increased. A current will then be induced, the magnetic moment of which counteracts the field set up in the toroid. Once the field has reached its maximum value, the current will fall to zero due to the resistance of the wire, and with it, the induced magnetic moment. We will now apply this fact to those atoms in which the magnetic moments of the orbiting electrons cancel out. If a magnetic field is applied, the electron orbits will be modified in such a way that the atom acquires a small magnetic moment which counteracts the field. The induced magnetic moment will now persist because there is no resistance to the modification of the electron orbits. A material made up of this type of atom shows a magnetization M, which opposes the external field and is known as a diamagnetic material. Diamagnetism is an effect which occurs in all materials, but when it occurs in conjunction with para or ferromagnetism, these latter effects will dominate. To sum up, all materials can be divided into three groups, depending on their behavior in a magnetic field. Diamagnetic materials show a magnetization which opposes the external field, whereas paramagnetic and ferromagnetic materials show a magnetization which reinforces the external field. Only in ferromagnetic materials is this contribution to the external field of great importance.